Let's see. Can you hear me okay? Is this good? Okay. Oh, let's do this. Let's do, uh, okay. How about that? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I'm Tony Martino, and <clears throat> so I wanted to kind of talk us through like a minimal example of Docker, like implementing like CRUD operations, just to kind of get something working. Okay. So there's first there's like the before Docker situation. This picture is supposed to be like your computer, and you're developing on it, and you have like your server, and maybe in this case we're going to use NestJS. In database, we're going to use Postgres, and you have like some tool for looking looking at your data that isn't either of those things. Okay, and um, this is fine. Okay. Next thing is you're kind of like thinking about your computer, and if you're like me, uh, you have all kinds of stuff on there, like old installs, stuff that conflicts, and the thing about Docker is it's going to kind of sit over here and you're going to keep it separate from all of your like trash and your cat gifts. Okay? So like it's a thing. Um, like before, so we had like database, server, admin tool. Now we have like these things, these containers, which are going to like contain uh, a running version of our database, our server, our, our uh, admin tool. Okay. 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 Uh, so the way it works is, Docker has its own like terminology for all these things. Um, when Docker says images, it really means like the blueprints from which to make running versions of your thing. And uh, when it says containers, it means the actual running thing. Um, and uh, your app is often made of several different items. So as you go on, you'll discover new tools to like kind of orchestrate and arrange uh, multiple containers into uh, something you can run and keep track of all at once. Um, let's see. Yeah, so Docker, it, it's, it's kind of like a virtual machine. You are running things inside of a box. Um, but it's like a, it's like a better box in some ways. Okay. Um, it offers like a lot of like, there's like kind of these nice like usability features. So here, um, kind of talk us through. So the top line, it's like, okay, I'm saying Docker, uh, please run me some Postgres thing. And Docker goes, well, I couldn't find it, but it's okay. I went off to Docker Hub, and I automatically grabbed it for you. And so if you don't have something locally, it will go off and get it for you, install it, and run it for you. And once it's done, it pops up and says, hey, look, I'm ready to go. You can, like, use me to put data, go places. Okay. Okay, let's see. Okay, so uh, I don't actually have a demo. Um, there are some technical difficulties, but let me just say this. So, <clears throat> so here we have, all right, uh, I'm saying Docker, I want you to run something, and I have all these options, like how it's gonna go about that. The, the dash D says, like, run it in the background. Um, and then we have this dash P for publish, and this is where you have to kind of tell, uh, you have to interface between the outside computer and like inside of Docker. So the 8000 is like the outside port, and the 80 is kind of like the internal Docker port. So on your computer, when you run this thing, you'll go to like uh, localhost 8000, and Docker will redirect all of the requests inside to the container at port 80. Okay. Um, we'll kind of we'll we'll get to that. Okay. So. So what this is running, this is uh, this um, engine X here. This is just a thing that serves up a web page, okay? And um, if you look, but you you can maybe that's like not enough. You can go into it and you can modify it. So so here we have like a Docker file, and the top line says I'm going from engine X. So it's okay. I want to give me a thing that can at least serve a web page, and maybe here I've gone and I've. Um, tacked on some some more files, so I'm gonna tell Docker when you make this image, um, put the stuff on the left into the spot on the right, okay? And if you have it build it, it'll give you some output, and it has these steps goes through each command, and you can see in the bottom I've kind of highlighted some stuff in green. Now, um, it's pretty smart about how it does this stuff. So, say later on you want to change your image. So you make this new file, and you're like, all right, I want you to throw in a, a different text file. Um, when you rerun the build process, it'll go through the same steps, but when it, like, so you get to, like, uh, the first step 
it already has that image, so it's good. And then it goes to step two and says, okay, I already have these files. I'm going to use a cached version. I already have that. Um, and it's even giving these names to the different uh, um, images that it's using in, in, in intermediate steps. And lastly, the step four, it says, okay, that's actually a new file. I have to like, redo that part. Okay. Let's see. So, all right, so that's, that's, so, so that's Docker, and it's like getting, uh, you're gonna use it to basically make like little Linux boxes and run things on these like tiny Linux boxes. Okay. For us, um, we want to run something in our back end to like handle the like going from like maybe our future front end and our database. So um, we're gonna use NestJS only because it's pretty self-contained um, and it looks like Angular. Okay. And I'll just kind of point to like the only relevant code. It's all boilerplate except for uh, some stuff. So you have like three things. Okay. This like left part, that's like saying, okay, I want to make, I have a, uh, my data is going to be just some companies and um, that at crud says, okay, uh, make, make routes, like make delete, get update requests for this kind of data. Um, the lower middle one is telling uh, uh, Nest how to handle the data between the database and the server. And then the upper right, this is a bunch of just connection information, how Nest should get to the database. And a lot of this is, the, the important bit actually is right here. So normally you would have local host here, but this just says DB. And the DB is going to refer to a Docker container called DB and Docker is going to handle the rerouting of the requests. Okay, let's see. So, okay, um, we had some earlier build files and when you wanna make a, a, a Nest JS like application, it's TypeScript and it has like its own like installation process. Um, so the build file is a little more complicated, but we'll, we'll step through it. So here you've got, okay, I'm saying from node, so give me a thing that at least can do node. And then I'm saying, all right, kind of work in this directory, uh, copy over um, all the requirements for my project and install them. This can like take a while, right? Uh, and the next step is, okay, take all the code in the current directory and put it kind of in the working directory that I had and then build it. And the way build works is it puts everything in distribution folder. And so you go there and you tell Docker um, please, please like put this guy on port 3000. And then the last bit, the command is a thing that always gets run when you start the container. So you run the container and it will automatically start the app. Okay, and uh, this, this bit in the middle here. So um, like on your computer, you'll say, okay, you'll go to port 1234 and Docker will internally pass all that stuff off to uh, like internal port 3000, essentially. Okay, so that's, that's getting one piece of it up and running, okay? Um, okay, let's see, so uh, once you have one piece, you want to have the rest of them kind of together, and the funny thing about Docker is, and this is where I had some confusion, um, everything in there has, it has its own like internal network, so when you make a new thing, Docker like puts it on a default bridge network, but those guys, um, they're like not allowed to talk to each other. So, so what you do is, you got two options. You can kind of make your own network or you can use Docker Compose to like make it automatically. So like by default, you can think of Docker Compose as a, as a list of these pieces. And when you run them together, it will automatically put them on the same network because it assumes that you're gonna want them to talk to each other. Okay, so have a picture of it. So, um, so the, the, it, there's a lot of like defaults here, but the main thing is, so kind of like the top level has a thing that says services, and we have a bunch of named pieces. So there's a nest server, a database service, and an admin or service. And this first one, this is the thing that we made in a previous slide. So when we made our, our uh, nest.js app, that Docker file, this is the part, it's gonna use this information 
to grab that Docker file and build it for us. The other ones, um, you can see it says uh, container name DB. So that's letting Nest.js know like when you, when you try to resolve the DB host name, you're going to go here. And for this one, um, I only have to say, I have to just tell it which image I'm going to use. I'm going to use Postgres 11. Um, I don't have to build it because I can get it online. Right? Okay. And uh, I also pass it uh, some like default kind of, well, uh, some like just the variables you would use to get access to it, like a DB user password app. Okay. Um, so you do that. And what do you get? Um, let's see. So this is kind of what it looks like in the end. Um, way at the top, you have a you run docker compose up, and that thing looks for a docker compose yaml file, which is this guy. And it goes through and just does everything, so it will uh, download if it's missing or build everything and then run it. Um, and you can kind of see like next, uh, all the container names, the DB and the server, show up in the log. Um, and the last thing, you, so on uh, upper left, this is the admin tool. Um, if I go back, so you go back to the admin tool, you can see where it says way in the bottom, ports 8080 to 8080. So that left one is the external 8080. And that's what's telling us that when we go to our browser, localhost, put in our stuff, um, we can get, get like access to the admin tool, which lets us like view the data. Okay. And uh, once you have this thing running up and running, um, you can use the admin tool to, to query it and get stuff out, or you can open up your command line and you can do like your standard get and post request like via curl to um, put stuff in. So like the get request is a route that it just sends back hello world and lets you know it's running, and the post request is okay. Um, you know, put Microsoft into, into the database and uh, kick it back so I know that you actually put it in there. Okay. Um, that's, that's it actually, that, that's, that's the, uh, um, the congratulations, you've made a Docker thing. <laughs> um, yeah, um, let's see. There's a lot of fanciness that you can do on the side. So um, if I go way back real quick, let's see, da, da, da. Um, oh yeah, okay, so this is kind of neat. Um, so, okay. Like, just to prove to you that it's actually a Linux box, that the, on the right-hand side, there's this Docker exec thing, and this says, like, go into my container and execute bash. So when you do that, you're actually, like, inside of it, and you can, like, poke around and look for files and stuff. Um, and when you do, you'll find out that all of its, um, its HTML files are in this user share nginx HTML folder. And so, um, like, you can like modify them directly in there, or you can have Docker kind of like link up part of your computer to the inside of the container. And that's what this dash V is. It says like, link my current directory to this spot inside the container and just put all the stuff in there and make, make them be synced. So you can like, um, well, I have it right there. So I, I made like an index file and that um, will change what the what Nginx ends up serving. Okay. And there's a lot to say about like Docker volumes and all this jazz, but that that's 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 the short end of it. Thank you. <laughs>